Hey everyone, welcome to Mythology Explained. In today's video, we're going to discuss Baphomet, an entity worshipped as an idol, demon and deity, depending on the group, particularly by pagans and gnostics, and depending on the time, as documentation of him goes back almost 1000 years. Some modern conceptualizations present him as a nexus of opposites, comprising a network of dichotomies and thereby personifying balance. Also called the Goat of Mendes, the Judas Goat, and the Black Goat, Baphomet is, today, either portrayed as a half-human, half-goat figure, or as a goat head. These depictions largely stem from a French occult book written in the 19th century, as we'll see. In the Middle Ages, idols of Baphomet included human heads carved of wood or wrought of metal, decorated with curly black hair, stuffed human heads, and human skulls. He became inextricably linked with the Knights Templar when several heinous accusations, such as the worship of Baphomet, were leveled against this order of monastic knights. Let's get into it. The first record of Baphomet comes from a letter written by Anselm of Ribemont in 1098 that describes the Siege of Antioch, which took place during the First Crusade. One line says the Turks called loudly upon Baphomet. It has been suggested that the name could be a corruption of Muhammad or Mohammed. Another theory, this one from Montague Summers, an English occult historian, postulates that it could be the combination of two Greek words, Baph and Metis, which, put together, would mean something like absorption of knowledge. One of the most fascinating aspects of Baphomet's history is his relationship with the Knights Templar, which we're going to unpack by first spending a little time on what the Knights Templar was, followed by how the two, a demonic god and Christian knights, became connected. The inception of the Knights Templar was in the year 1119 CE. Ten years later, they became officially sanctioned through papal recognition, and for long years they were a formidable force, and paradoxically, it is this power, ultimately, that sows the seed of its own ruination. Basically, the Knights Templar was an order of monastic knights, warriors of God who combined battle prowess with abstinence and asceticism. The original purpose on which the order was founded was to protect pilgrims and Christian holy sites. Among the most elite warriors in the Crusader armies, the order amassed considerable power over time, coming to control lands and castles of its own. Later, all manner of accusations were leveled against them, including corruption, heresy, and performing forbidden practices. In particular, it was targeted by King Philip IV in the year 1307 CE. Five years later, the order was abolished when it was officially dissolved by the papacy. You see, in a way, the Knights Templar became a scapegoat for a variety of military orders with religious ties. Singled out and sacrificed for the transgressions, perhaps real, perhaps invented, of a number of powerful orders that had emerged, many of them perceived as threats towards existing structures like monarchies and the nobility. The vast land networks and rich cash reserves accumulated, not helping to mitigate this view. Among the litany of offenses leveled against them were abusing privileges, exploiting and extorting for profit, and scorning their founding edicts by succumbing to vice and sin, especially pride and avarice. Critics disparaged them, claiming they lived too fat and contributed too little, that the rot of self-indulgence had eaten away and replaced all that was once pure and productive. Following the attack by King Philip, the accusations drastically escalated in severity and gained unholy specificity. It was asserted that the order was an affront to God, denying Christ, the crucifixion, and the cross, and worshipping Baphomet. Furthermore, of the initiation into the order, it was claimed that trampling, spitting, and urinating on the crucifix were among the practices involved. That the Knights Templar were indeed guilty of sacrilege and desecration is seen as dubious and unlikely by most. Rather, the common belief is that these accusations were the tip of the dagger in a plot to disband and destroy the order, a plan that enriched and empowered the coalition that contrived this outcome. 
Deciding to move against the Order was likely the culmination of an array of reasons, including preempting a possible military threat, amassing wealth through cash reserves and land holdings, and for secular institutions to gain advantage over the papacy. However, it is also possible that King Philip believed in earnest the rumors about the Knights Templar. The depiction of Baphomet well known today originates from a French book, Dogme Rituel de la Haute Magie, written in 1861 by Eliphas Levi, an occultist who inspired the cult icon Baphomet as become today. The cover art of the book is the photo used in this video's thumbnail, which portrays Baphomet as a sabbatic goat in appearance, having a hermaphroditic, humanoid body with wings opening up behind and surmounted by a goat's head, a pentagram emblazoned on the forehead. Inspirations for the design were the Tarot Devil card, as well as some version of the Goat of Mendez, being the eponymous city in which this goat was either worshipped or used in cult practices during antiquity. One account says that it was a temple goat that would copulate with priestesses, another that it was a goat man that would copulate with its worshippers. In either case, it's possible that this was an antecedent for a notion about the devil that propagated in the Middle Ages, which was that he engaged in sexual unions with his female disciples, witches. Per the book's description of Baphomet's appearance, he embodies the equilibrium of opposites. Major dichotomies encapsulated by him are male and female, good and evil, human and animal, and light and dark. Though his half-human, half-animal appearance conjures up notions like wickedness, the author's intent is for Baphomet to incarnate balance, the whole constellation of opposites coalescing into something transcendent. Founded in 1966, the Church of Satan began using a representation of Baphomet as the symbol for their religion. The symbol is a goat head encased in an inverted pentacle enclosed by two rings, and between the two rings are Hebraic figures that spell Leviathan, a colossal sea monster sometimes associated with the devil. Quite recently, in 2015, a statue of Baphomet was commissioned by the Satanic Temple. In protest, it was moved next to other public religious displays, like the Monument of the Ten Commandments in Oklahoma, and ultimately, the Oklahoma Supreme Court ruled public religious displays illegal. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. As always, leave your video suggestions down below.